And uh, this was a time when a lot of people in Ottawa were suggesting that um, that we should just uh, extricate the country from the, the, that beleaguered society, um, more or less uh, regardless of the costs. And uh, when the issue came up, Martha um, it took the position, uh, perhaps uh, on account of her exposure to international affairs, that uh, it was a little more complex than that. And uh, that left an impression, and I think um, it definitely signaled to me that uh, here was somebody who was willing to make decisions, uh, responsible decisions that a leader should make, not just ride the popular wave with, wave, wave with all sorts of uh, platitudes and so forth. Secondly, um, Martha would govern on the basis of evidence and facts, not just uh, you know sacred cows and uh, and uh, an ideology. Um, even in the case of liberal sacred cows. Now, I know this seems like common sense, but uh, unfortunately, uh, these days, Ottawa is a place where facts and common sense go to die. So it's good to see that uh, um, whether it's res with respect to the concept of a national energy infrastructure strategy or uh, uh, supply management reform, these are, these are sacred cows, uh, not just in some sectors of Canada at large, but also even within our own party. Um, the issue, I mean, with infrastructure, for example, it's not very easy for, given the history with national energy policy and so forth, for a prospective liberal leader to, to make these sorts of positions. So that's another thing that I think holds uh, Martha in, in very good stead. Uh, thirdly, uh, Martha recognizes something that I know I've been at pains to point out about our party, and that's unfortunately that we're no longer a truly national party. Um, that is why she launched her campaign uh, from this time around uh, from Calgary. Um, and uh, uh, I guess what needs to be said on this front, really, and we've seen this with the last few elections, is that we ignore the, the rest of the country and its regions that are peril. Canadian politics, in Canadian politics, geography really is destiny, and so it's important to have um, power bases of support across the country. Yes, um, I guess I think really what that shows is that the choice between uh, the choice before us is really a choice between the small, narrow politics of Stephen Harper and uh, the bold, thoughtful leadership of someone like Martha Hall Finley. So please join me in giving a round of applause to Martha. <laughs> reminding me of that. Um, now, can I just say thank you, Christian, very much, and, and for your support. And I mean, Richard, you're relatively new to this, um, but uh, Anne and Rosemary and John, by implication, have been involved. He's actually wearing a red shirt right now, which is we lead, have made such progress. Um, but since, my gosh, the beginning of the 2004 campaign in Newmarket, that goes back a long way, so thank you. Um, and uh, in an environment like this, it's great. I can I can talk a bit about what I'm doing and why, and I will. Um, I'll talk a little bit about where I think we need to go forward, but I know that there's some excellent questions that uh, some folks have, and I look forward to being able to do this in a very informal way. So I am running for the leadership of Liberal Party Canada. I am doing it for the second time. A number of people have asked me, why are you doing this? Why are you doing this again? And my answer every time is for all the same reasons that I did it in 2006. We need an alternative. And I want that to be the Liberal Party. I am I'm proud of everything that the Liberal Party has done to, with this country over many, many years. Healthcare, Canada Pension Plan, um, what we did in terms of economics under the, the Craig Martin era in the 1990s into the early 2000s. I mean, this is a party for me, and it's the reason I joined the party, was that this was the party that I represented economic responsibility. I'm a business person. I get this. Um, economic responsibility, real, true fiscal prudence, um, environmental sustainability, social justice, equality of opportunity, respect, and, and, and effort to make the world a better place on the international stage. I mean, that's, that's what I see as having been the hallmarks of the Liberal Party, and I, and I want us to continue to do that as a country. I don't see that happening, um, and 
I want to make sure that we see that in 2015. Um, the challenge, though, is that in 2006, we had just elected a Harvard government. And I'm a liberal, not a big fan, as you can imagine. And we were worried about that. I mean, we had things that were said, you know, certainly things that Stephen Harper had said when he was head of the National Citizens Coalition had me worried, had a lot of us worried. Things that had been said during the campaign. Um, uh, I didn't, I really did not like the attitude in the 2006 campaign. It was a, a foreshadowing, certainly, of the level of attack that we were going to see in politics, and it was not pretty. Um, so we were worried about what would happen with the Harper government. Interestingly enough, one of the things that I thought was actually not bad um, was accountability and transparency. Right? Now remember, in 2006, that was a big part of their slogan. That was a big, you know, and I have to say, we've had our challenges in this country. We've had our challenges as liberals. We're in our sponsorship, right? So the words accountability and transparency mean a lot to me. I thought they were great. I didn't vote for them, trust me. But I actually sat watching what was happening thinking, you know, let's see what you can do. Because I like those words. Isn't it ironic that of all of the things that we were worried about, those ended up being the most hypocritical? Because I have never seen a government that is as least as, as unaccountable and as uh, untransparent as this current government. I mean, just astounding. So in any case. Fast forward seven years. We've had a Harper government for seven years. Well, let me backtrack for a minute because it, in, we just elected Harper, uh, Mr. Harper, but as liberals, we were in the middle of a leadership campaign. And uh, we had these great candidates, and they were saying all the right things about what we needed to do for the party, what we needed to do for Canada. Um, and we went through that process, as elected a leader, as everybody knows the history of the, the following number of years. So fast forward seven years, we've had a Harper government for seven years, um, and here we are as liberals in another leadership campaign, and we have a great group of candidates. Now, I may be the only VP defender, but, um, but we do have a terrific group of candidates, and they're saying great things about the party, and they're things, saying great things about what we should be doing for the country. The only problem is that we as liberals have only managed to lose two more elections. Needless to say, the last one really badly. So what do we do? What do we do to go forward? Well, we have a couple of pretty stark options in this leadership campaign. And I know there are an awful lot of people as liberals who are just, you know, we have to do something. We can't, you know, we can't keep doing this. We need to find that, that answer. Well, this isn't personal, but this cannot be about celebrity. It cannot be about silver bullets and quick fixes. That simply doesn't happen. Um, and my worry is that, as liberals, we don't have any chances left in the bucket. I really am worried that we've been through this enough times that uh, we, if we do this wrong, um, it could be very bad. Um, so in terms of what I believe we need to do and why I'm running, let me give you actually a little anecdote. And for some of, um, in 1985, um, the New Brunswick Provincial Liberal Party wasn't doing so well. And they entered into a leadership campaign and they elected a new leader who was not flashy. And he doesn't take it personally when I say that, trust me. Not flashy but incredibly substantive, experienced, smart, great track record of getting things done. And Frank McKenna and his liberal team spent the next two years going community after community. And every time Frank would say, I want to meet with the most respected people in this community. And it wasn't partisan, it wasn't Anglophone Francophone, which anybody who knows New Brunswick knows that's actually a bit of an issue there. Um, in fact, people would say, well, you want the most respected people, you want, you might want the local lawyer, and then somebody would say, well, you don't want to talk to him because he's conservative, and Frank would say, no, this isn't about partisan politics. I want to meet with the most respected people in this community, and remember, this is important, respected people because they've gained respect in their communities for having accomplished things, right? That's how you gain respect. You gain respect by getting things done for the benefit of your community, right? 
not partisan. But as he said, I want to have this discussion with people so that we can talk and, and really discuss the challenges facing the province. And there were many. New Brunswick was suffering badly economically at the time too. So we want to talk about what the challenges are that face this province and then how do we come up with the solutions together. Now this wasn't a listening tour. I can tell you I spent 10 months in 2006 traveling across the country, some of you know only too well, that 10 months of traveling across the country in the big red bus. And then uh, I was asked after that leadership, some of you may have noticed I didn't actually win, um, but sometimes in losing you get actually what you want in the sense that um, I was asked to go back out on the road by the party to be the, plat the Liberal Party's platform outreach chair to uh, engage in discussions with Canadians again for another four months. So in 2006 and 2007, I spent 14 months and my whole job was engaging in conversations with Canadians. It was absolutely fantastic. I think I probably, I've probably had more conversations with more Canadians than anybody. I think about it. I mean, how is it, you know, it's not very often you lose and you, you get the most incredible experience you could ever have. I mean, I just, I just feel like the luckiest person. Um, that was extraordinary. And pulled all this information together, put together a big report, and of course, it's collecting dust. Right? Remember Michael Ignatieff did his tour, the big red tent tour, right? Out listening to people, right? It's all good to listen. In fact, you should always be listening. We should always be listening. But right now, people really want us to get something done. You know, so when you talk about, we're not going to talk about policies in this campaign, we're just going to, you know, we'll, 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 we'll choose a leader and then we'll go out and listen. We've been doing this for years. We have to finally do something. Canadians want us to do something. So, back to Frank McKenna. It's not a listening tour, it was a doing tour. And it was working, as I said, community after community for two years. Two years later, 1987, Frank McKenna and the Liberals won every single seat in the legislature. This is the history lesson, a complete sweep. They had to fake question period. Having been through a few years of question period in the House of Commons, I can tell you faking it would be great. You might actually get answers. You might actually get real questions. Anyway, um, the idea of, 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 uh, of that you know, I, I remember them saying, gee, how do you fake question period? And I thought, man, oh man, if that's the biggest problem you have, that's okay, right? Um, but the story is important because that's exactly what we need to do with the Federal Liberal Party. That's exactly what the country needs. It isn't a question of silver bullets. It isn't a question of uh, the quick fix. It is substance, it's experience, it's the ability to then pull a team together and work really, really hard to uh, not just talk about it, but to actually find solutions to the challenges facing the country. Um, that's why I'm running. I, it's presumptuous, it would be presumptuous of me to compare myself to somebody I admire as much as Frank McKenna, but he has set a hell of an example. Frank McKenna set a heck of a great example for us, um, and certainly for what uh, it can be accomplished at a time of need. And that's exactly, I'll say it again, that's exactly what we need to do um, as a Liberal Party of Canada. And that's exactly what the country needs. Because in 2015, we will have that many more years of Harper government. And by then, we'll desperately need a change. We do need accountability. We do need transparency. We do need solutions to problems. Um, we do need to regain our position of respect in the world, which we have drastically lost. Um, so, big job ahead. So I'm here.